a way to send money home to their families. So here's what they did. They actually found a way to make this happen using local panwalas. Panwalas are like these corner shops, basically, and, and they're trusted people in the neighborhood because many of these shops have existed for 20, 30, 40 years. They're even generational. They come from father to son and so forth. Well, these panwalas become, can become part of a grid network of sorts to reach the so-called last mile, the last frontier out to these villages. But it's all actually done through the State Bank of India, which I thought is amazing. That is really Basically, innovative. It's innovative, right? So the way this works is you deposit your 1,000 rupees to your local panwala. He, because he's got more money and is more resourceful than the average worker, will wire that money over to the State Bank of India. Meanwhile, State Bank of India, because it has presence across India, will wire that money to the nearest office or branch. That branch will then wire that money out to the local panwala, who then gets it to the family member. And the network all, just... All via your cell phone. That's all amazing. via the text messaging capacities of your cell phone. This is just amazing. And in fact, the article was written by Tom Friedman, and it appeared in the New York Times. Uh, please read it. It's called Do Believe the Hype. He used this, this whole story about this form of um, lending money, or at least transferring money between point A to point B, as a way to say that India is finding innovative ways to deal with its infrastructure issues. There's such out-of-the-box thought involved in these kinds of new ventures that he thinks whatever we know and understand of these countries, India being one of them, and other up-and-coming nations like Brazil being one of them, that we've only begun to scratch the surface of what's possible. So if we are afraid of what these countries have to offer us in the next 20 to 50 years, we've seen nothing yet. And so his article is called, Do Believe the Hype Because It's All True. It's great. I think it speaks volumes about India. Have you ever been sitting in traffic, listening to the radio, and hearing about the traffic jam that you're actually sitting in? And there's nothing you can do about it. You're in it. You're not going anywhere. You just have to wait patiently as the traffic continues oh, to I'm move. I'm not very patient. I'm usually cursing at the person <laughs> in front of me. You know, it happens all the time. And the thing is that when it comes to traffic, real-time information is too late. When you're hearing it as it's happening, there's not much you can do about it. It's a very reactive way of, of handling this kind of technology when, in fact, we've got technology now to enable us to be more predictive in understanding traffic patterns. These days, modern highways don't just transport vehicles, they also carry vast amounts of data. That's what this Wired Magazine article is all about. The information collected by countless electronic sensors and devices, everything from GPS devices to mobile phones. So basically, why are we not using this data more strategically so that it can be more of a predictor, so that you have more of a chance of being out of that traffic jam before you get into it? The Transportation Information Management Organization aims to collect and analyze that data so that it can better transfer and make decisions about traffic. So Hopefully, that predictive technology is just around the corner, and maybe you won't just be sitting there cursing <laughs> in traffic next time. Folks, have you ever wondered how ugly you are? No, in all seriousness, if you've ever wondered how ugly you are... That's a terrible <laughs> question. <also. laughs> there is a new iPhone application, thanks to technology. There's a new iPhone application called the Ugly Meter that lets users take photos of their faces and then the application analyzes their facial structure in real time to give you a score out of 10. <laughs> so you're telling me there's an app for that. There's an app for that. <laughs> if you get a 10 out of 10, folks, it might tell you something like, you're so ugly, when you walk by the bathroom, the toilet flushes. <laughs> oh, my God. But, but if you score something closer to a 1, let's say a 2.6, it might be kinder, gentler to you and say, if beauty were time, You'd take an eternity. <laughs> I think, in all honesty, this ugly meter application is just designed to be fun and games. In fact, the app was actually created by a company called Dapper Gentlemen of Gilbert, Arizona. The company behind it says they actually tried to use some uh, science linking symmetry to beauty, basically relating that symmetrical symmetry on the face translates into beauty. There's been several science articles that have tried to make that point. 
the app apparently does the same thing and comes up with a composite score. But the reality is, you've seen these uh, iPhone cameras. They're not exactly great. <laughs> You're in the wrong lighting, and it's not going to give you a great score. So they, even they admit that it's really just a lighthearted application. Uh, it's not based on any real specific science, but, you know, you can have fun with it at a party. But go figure. Who would have come up with an app like I this? I don't know. <laughs> I still believe in the old adage, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, and I don't think I'm going to be downloading that app anytime Apparently soon. Apparently it's in the eye of your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of technology, I did not know that the Queen of England is herself quite active on the web and on email, and now apparently Facebook. Yes, the Queen has her own Facebook page, which just launched this week. They already have a British monarchy Twitter feed. And this time what they have is a Facebook page. Now, you can't become her friend on Facebook, and you can't poke her or write on her wall. But you can see <laughs> all those exciting royal events that are happening. And for those of you who want to follow it minute by minute, you have another way of doing so. She's hip, you know. She's, she's with it. She's with the times, you know. She's, she's fashionista. I mean, there might be a lot of people that are interested. And, you know, there's rumors going around. Of course, you see what's happening with uh, Prince William, mm -hmm. and the fact that he might be getting married. There's rumors about this, too. So the page could be a flutter with new news. You never know. <laughs> well, staying on Facebook for a minute, I was interested to read that there's been some tension between Facebook and Google. For those of you who created Facebook accounts way back when, usually when you create your account, you're given the option of sending invitations for friends in all of your Gmail or your Google contacts list. Importing right? them directly You in. could import them, they'd automatically get a message, and that way you started out with a great group of friends on Facebook without much effort involved at all, right? It was pretty simple. Well, now Google is interested in social networking, and they're also developing a competitor of Facebook internally. So what they are saying is that we want access to Facebook user information. So come on, Facebook, it's your turn to reciprocate return a little bit, favor. return the favor. <laughs> and Facebook's not cooperating. So Google has now changed their policy. Uh, when you sign up for a Facebook account, you can no longer have immediate access to those Google contact lists that were available before. It's not going to be as simple to create that network of friends and have the link between the two. So there's, you know, these are big, you know, giants when it comes to technology, Google and Facebook, and sharing user information is at the heart of this controversy. You know, it's a shame, right? Because technology was meant to integrate. And when we first started out with this, it was cool to integrate all these different things in that you were using. But now it's about market share and it's about trying mm -hmm. to get that next set of consumers. And so what happens? Eventually the giants decide to become very proprietary about it. You saw it with Apple.